Last week, we talked about what a Microsoft account is, and this week, I'm gonna show you how to rid your life of Microsoft accounts completely, in more ways than one. Stay tuned. In this video, I'm not only going to show you how to install Windows 11 without a Microsoft account, but I'm also gonna show you how to convert a Microsoft account back to a local account. And we're also going to cover how to stop Microsoft accounts from even working on a Windows 11 system. We're also going to try to get rid of some of the nag screens and prompts asking you to sign into a Microsoft account. But first, I gotta pay some bills, so check out today's sponsor. This week's sponsor is me. If you'd like to support this channel, the best way is to pick up a t-shirt at cybercputech.com. All my t-shirts are extremely high quality and durable. These are the same shirts I wear in videos. So if you like the shirt I'm wearing, then head over to cybercputech.com and pick yourself up one today. So if you wanna know what a Microsoft account is and why you shouldn't use one, then you should check out last week's video. I answered that question in pretty good detail. This video, on the other hand, is about ridding yourself of Microsoft accounts forever, or at least until Microsoft changes something and I have to do another video about it. But let's jump on the system and we'll get this done. Okay, so here we are in Windows 11. However, we're gonna start out in a VM because I wanna show you how to install Windows 11 without a Microsoft account. And instead of going through an entire install process, I have this one paused right at the moment when we're supposed to enter in a Microsoft account, or at least at the last stage of install when they require you to sign into a Microsoft account. So we're gonna go ahead and fire our VM up here. And the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when you fire the system up, or when you go to this setting, set this point in the setup right here, is to actually disable your ethernet connection. And just unplug it from the back of your computer. On me, I disabled it from here, from in VirtualBox. However, on yours, you can just unplug the cable and it should work just fine. And then once setup starts, obviously it's gonna give you an error because you don't have a network cable connected. And that's fine, we can go ahead and we can get through that error. What you have to do is go ahead and hit Shift F10 to open up a command prompt window. And then in that window, you wanna type in start space ms dash cxh colon local only. And this should open up the local account creation wizard. And from here you just, enter your information for local account. I'm gonna put no password on mine. And at that point, it should skip through to setting up Windows for the first time. However, what you can do at this point is you can go ahead and reconnect your ethernet at this point, and then go ahead and let setup finish. And it's gonna take a minute for it to get through this. And once it does, we'll skip to the next step. Okay, so this is the last step before Windows boots. You're gonna go ahead and select your privacy settings. I usually uncheck all of these. You can check yours whichever way you want and go ahead and hit accept. And it'll load into Windows. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and launch settings real quick. And as you can see, we're gonna be running Windows 11 right here with a local account. Now, this is great. Now we have a copy of Windows 11 installed with a local account. But what if you're already installed Windows 11 and you log into a Microsoft account? Let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to convert that Microsoft account back to a local account. Let's do it. Okay, so this install right here was only for demonstrating how to create a local account. We can go ahead and crash this virtual machine and we don't need that anymore. So I am running a Microsoft account currently on this install of Windows 11. So if we click on start and we go to settings, as you'll see, this is in fact a Microsoft account. And then all we have to do is click right here and then from there, you wanna scroll down and you wanna click on the link that says your info. And then from there, you wanna click this link that says sign in with a local account instead. And once you click that, it's gonna go ahead, go ahead and hit next. It's gonna make you enter your PIN that you're currently using. Go ahead and enter that. And then fill in whatever information you want and then hit next. And at this point, it's gonna to want to sign you out in order to finish converting your account over to a local account. So we'll go ahead and push sign out and finish and it'll go ahead and sign out of our Microsoft account. And then from here, we can just sign back in. But once we're back into Windows, we can go ahead and click Start, hit Settings here. And as you can see, now we are clearly using a local account. So now that we've covered how to install Windows 11 with a local account 
and how to switch from a Microsoft account to a local account, what about all the constant nag screens and notifications telling you that you need to log into a Microsoft account? Those can get quite annoying. Unfortunately though, there's no way to completely disable them. However, there is a few things that we can do to that maybe minimize the amount of times we have to look at them. So let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so from here we can go ahead and close this and we're gonna wanna open up regedit. Go ahead and hit yes to the user account control. And then from here we wanna go to local machine. And then from local machine we wanna go to software, Microsoft. And then we want to go down to policy manager and this is all going to be alphabetical so we'll go ahead and go down to policy manager here then we want to go into default then we want to scroll down into settings and then from here we want to go to allow your account right here okay and then for the value for this one this is enables it right here and essentially what this is is if we go into our settings page right here and we click here and we click your info right there this is the your info page right here so what we'd be doing is by changing this value from zero from one to zero it's essentially turning off the our access to this page so it won't allow us to get to this page and it may work or it may not, but I saw several people claim that by disabling this page, it will actually get rid of a lot of the nag screens that you see to sign in with a Microsoft account. However, it may or may not work. It's hard to say, but there is one other step that you can make also. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this real quick, and then we're gonna go ahead and open up services. And then from services, you're gonna to wanna to look for a service called Connected User Experience and Telemetry. So if we scroll down here, and these should all be in alphabetical, alphabetical order. So we go to Connected User Experience and Telemetry right here. Now, this service right here is mostly Microsoft's telemetry service, but there's a lot of talk in saying that some of the notifications that remind you to log into a Microsoft account are actually coming from this service here. So by stopping it, it should minimize, and then also by disabling it as well, it should minimize the amount of times you're bugged about starting a Microsoft account. Like for instance, when you click the start button right here, a lot of times you'll get the little thing here that says, do you wanna log into a Microsoft account? Or when you click on settings, you'll have the little banner that shows up right here that asks you if you wanna log into a Microsoft account. By disabling this service and that registry key before, it should eliminate those specific notifications. Okay, so hopefully this takes care of the majority of the nag screens. However, you're still able to log into a Microsoft account. You may have friends or family that you support that just don't know the difference and might click on the link at some point and log their system into a Microsoft account, not knowing that they don't have to. Or even worse, you support a business whose employees keep logging into their personal Microsoft accounts kind of makes it hard to be able to administer a system if somebody in accounting happens to be using their home Microsoft account and encrypts the computer for whatever reason. So let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to make the system simply not accept Microsoft account logins at all. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, so to do this, what we're gonna do is we gotta open up RegEdit again. So we're gonna go back into our registry editor, hit yes. And then for this one, we want to go all the way back up to the top. We want to go into local machine. And then from there, we want to go back into software. And then from software, Microsoft. And then Microsoft, we want to go into Windows. Um, it should be down here somewhere. I'm not sure why I'm not finding it. It's probably because I have policy manager and everything else open. That's, that's probably it. Yeah, there's Windows right there. Okay. Make sure I did this right first. Okay, Microsoft and then Windows. Okay, if you have any sub keys open, then by just typing it on the keyboard, we'll follow those sub keys. So keep that in mind. So we wanna to go to current version. Then from current version, we wanna go into policies. So we're gonna scroll down and go into policies. 
Then from policies, we want to go into system. And then from here, we want to create a DWORD 32-bit value. And for the name of that value, we want it to say no connected user. And make sure to copy right off the screen exactly the way I have it with the capitalization exactly the way I have it. And there's a couple options here. Now we can keep it at zero. And by keeping it zero, just it's just it's disabled. There's no effect. It works exactly like it has always worked. It allows you to freely add and log into Microsoft. Microsoft accounts, or we can change it to one. Now, if we change it to one, users cannot add a new Microsoft account to the system. Now, what this means is just to be specific, this doesn't mean you can't just create a Microsoft account. That means you can't add an account that hasn't been associated with the system before. So even if you have a previous Microsoft account that you've created at one point in time, you won't be able to log that onto the system. It will only accept Microsoft accounts that have previously been used on this system, it won't accept anything else. And then the other option is three. And I know there's no number two, and I don't know why. It's just zero, one, and three are the options. But the th number three won't allow any Microsoft account to work whatsoever. Now you have to be a little careful with this one right here because the problem is, is if you are currently logged in with a Microsoft account and you use the number three in order to block all Microsoft accounts, you will lock yourself out of your computer. Ask me how I know <laughs> because I tested it and it does in fact log you out. It will not let you log in going forward with your current Microsoft account and luckily, I tested it on a virtual machine, so I was able just to roll it back. So it's not that big a deal. However, what I recommend is I recommend probably using number one. This will retain any Microsoft account that's currently logged in, but won't allow any new ones to be logged in. So once you type that, go ahead and hit OK. And at this point, you shouldn't be able to log into a Microsoft account anymore. Now, this should stop a system from logging into a Microsoft account. At least with my testing, it wasn't able to get the system logged back into my Microsoft account after setting this registry setting. However, you have to be cautious with this one because like I said before, if you happen to already have a Microsoft account and you set this to option number three, you will no longer be able to actually log on to the computer with your Microsoft account. And it won't give you an error either about your Microsoft accounts being disabled. It just simply won't accept your PIN or password and won't allow you to reset it either. You're just, you're stuck at the login screen with nothing to do. So ultimately setting this registry key to number one is probably the safer bet. That will allow you to use whatever Microsoft accounts you already have associated with that system, but it won't allow you to add any new Microsoft accounts moving forward. But regardless with how you set it up, though, you should be able to log on with the Microsoft's individual services with your Microsoft account. For instance, you'll be able to log into Office or OneDrive or Xbox or whatever other service you want to use. You just won't be able to associate that specific Microsoft account with the Windows login. But Let's say that you just don't want Microsoft accounts to work at all, not for the Windows login or for any Microsoft service whatsoever. You can do that too. Let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so this one's pretty easy. We're gonna go ahead and close our reg edit right there. We're gonna go ahead and run back into services here. So once we launch services, we're gonna look for the Microsoft Sign-In Assistant Service. So we're gonna scroll down alphabetical order. So we're gonna look for the Microsoft account. Okay, Microsoft Account Sign-In Assistant. Okay, so I, I think that's what I said. Isn't it what I said? Yeah, it's what I was looking for either way. Actually, I don't think it is. It's, oh, I had Microsoft Sign-In Assistant Service. It's Microsoft Account Sign-In Assistant. All right, so if we launch this right here, it's set to manual. We're gonna set it to disable and hit stop right here. And then once we do that, you can't log on to any Microsoft account at all with any service at all, not with your Windows login or with OneDrive, Xbox, you name it, you won't be able to use it. This completely stops MS accounts from working on everything. 
So at this point, you should be free from the shackles of Microsoft accounts. And just keep in mind, if you ever change your mind about using a Microsoft account, you can always just change the settings and put them back to the way they were before or adjust them to meet your needs better. For instance, the newest version of Microsoft Office requires you to use a Microsoft account. You can't even install it without one. But if you stop the Microsoft account authentication service, you won't be able to install Office at all. I mean, I guess you can always use other alternatives for Office, but you won't be able to use Microsoft Office. So just keep that in mind. Either way though, if privacy is important to you, then it's probably best to stay away from using a Microsoft account altogether. And there's lots of other things that you can do on a Windows system to protect your privacy. And if you'd like to know more about that, then check out this video here, where I go step by step through making a Windows 11 system as private as possible. And as always, you guys have a great day.